I am making the All About Me quilt. Started this process many years ago. Um, so I don't even know this fabric is in print. I'm making this for someone who's obviously a police officer for Christmas. So I feel kind of bad because he's asked me several times. So the goal is to get all this sewn today. What I'm trying to figure out is the arrangement of the quilt. Um, the binding is going to be black, and the backing, I want to do the darkest blue they have available at the quilt shop. I don't know if I bought backing for this fabric, and if I did, I don't know what it's at, and I don't really have that super desire to go look for it. This patch here that I think is super cool um, won't fit. Oh shoot, is he here? Okay. It's at work today, so I'm just like, be at work so I can do this. Um, yeah. So here we are. I'm trying to figure out the layout. I want there to be yellow in every block. Hopefully this is still, yeah, in print as much as possible. I'm moving this up because I don't have much room back there. And this is the only spot I have available to put the quilt. I guess I could have put on the floor in there, but I mopped the floor and whatever. Anywho, that's neither here nor there. The point is I'm trying to have yellow in every section and not have the same fabrics in every section, if that makes sense. So like this is different print here. These are different here. I need something to go here. So what I could do is put this one here. Because I want there in the little three block section, I want there to be yellow in every block. Because if there's not, then I feel like it just looks kind of random. And I want, and yellow is something that draws your eyes in, I feel like. So if you have yellow kind of everywhere, then um, it kind of, your eye jumps to different spots. So it doesn't just settle in one spot, it kind of jumps all over. Now, these fabrics is what he picked out, again, many years ago. So I don't even know where you would find this fabric. The local coat shop I was at, they had some offers in fabric print. I didn't really like it that much. I feel like this looks more um, mature. Is that the correct word? It's not saying the fabric was bad looking, but I feel like this looks more mature. Okay? Um, if there's any negative comments referring to my choice of prints or choice of fabric that I'm using, it will be deleted a lot. Okay? Because we're not here to debate. Um, in this video, you're just kind of seeing my thought process and probably even maybe the finished quilt. So I've shown pictures of me cutting stuff just because I felt like I was, you know, felt like sharing. And then I was like, you know what, let me actually record a video <laughs> of my thought process. Especially because I really do like this pattern it's to showcase prints. And it, um, the blocks, they sew up really quickly. Like, I was able to get these blocks done within a, a week or two. Now, keep in mind, I have a lot going on. And it's Christmas time. And I've been doing stuff, craft markets, and stuff like that. Which, if you watch my videos before, you know that. So. Everything hasn't been like, you know, we're just sitting here twiddling our thumbs. I joined a couple quilt groups and one of them has been extremely helpful. Um, I'll link it below. Um, I can't remember the name of it right now. Something like Young um, Quilter, Young Women Quilt or something like that. 
But this is what I have going on. I'm gonna show you the fabric left over here. Don't get some sick. So, me and my math, I put one too many gloss. I really like, there you go, this patch because it's colorful, it's bright, it's all things. So, but I don't want to put this on the back because this is not, you know, soft to lay on. So the idea is possibly making a, another quilt because I do have more blocks, um, <laughs> more fabric. And maybe doing a wall hanging, but do I want that one to be it? You know what I mean? I wanted certain patches in here because certain of the certain these patches represent um, different stages and parts of his life. This one's just pretty to me. <laughs> oh man, I gotta figure out which one to let go. I think I need know which one we're going to let go because I really do like this one because it's really nice. <clears throat> I think I'm going to let, I think I'm going to let Marley go because I do have a North Carolina, I have two North Carolina patches in here actually. I believe I do. There's Greensboro. So I have two North Carolina patches already. Um, so this one we're gonna let go. We'll let go of Riley. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with the other blocks. Should I make another quilt and incorporate um, military? colors in here let me know and just make this the center and then do stuff around it and maybe it's a, I don't know I don't know leave me leave comments below what should I do with the leftover blocks because what I'm not going to do <laughs> is make another row I would have to make either one more of these and put it up here you all see that? And put another one here, which I don't have this particular white fabric in, uh, on me. And then I would have to make, let's see, more of these little squares. We're not even gonna count. Or I would have to make three and put them down below. You see what I'm saying? One two and then three down there can't really see it but yeah down there i would have to make three down there so to keep me from having this to make more i think this is what we're going to do oh i need a, I need a block there and this is my dilemma because i don't want to use this one and i don't necessarily want to use this one because that's there already and this has, this print here has the same fabric all the way around. But if I use this, which I have a lot of it, see this is my problem. How did I count? Oh, I can't count, apparently. Because I have that right there, I don't have to find a spot for it, you know what I mean? A lot, a lot of maneuvering, a lot of maneuvering. Unless I ditch this, and then here we are back to square one. Figuring out because I need a yellow. You see what I'm saying? Oh, there's two yellows over there. That's a no no. Why are y'all tell me that? Look, there's two yellows. Can y'all see that? I know I look rough. There's two yellows, and that's what I'm trying to prevent. Two yellows in a block. So this can definitely go over here. I do not want two yellows in the same block. So because of that, because we move that, we have this here. We need a block there. So that looks like this one. 
This is up here because that already has a yellow. And then we need something right here. We need a non-yellow block. <clears throat> and here's where my dilemma comes in. It's like having to move some stuff around. I can make this a yellow block and then I'll have let's see oh this needs to be a yellow block right here so if I take this out and make this a yellow block right here that works there and then I can put it there I didn't even see that Okay. What do y'all think? I know a lot of this will be already done. I can't really post this on YouTube right now because then he'll see it. I mean, you've seen some of the pieces of it. So, what I want to do now is rearrange the pieces that rearrange some of the patches. That's what I want to do. So I kind of want to put this one here. So the lot of that blue I felt like right there. Not that it's not a big deal to do. What a, this is a hard part. Moving these around so that we have different colors. Oh Lord, in different spots. Let's there. kind of rearranging a couple stuff. Kawhi has a lot of that blue. I need the black. The gray, like kind of breaks that up a little bit. And the gray, see how that breaks this up a little bit? And then I move this over here. And that breaks that up. However, what I don't like. Corner over here. Can you see that? Well, maybe you can't. There we go. This corner over here, I don't like that corner because too many of the same type of blues. I need something with black or maybe a whole different color that's not up there. And I see what I need. I need one of these. And actually, what I think may work, let's see what I don't want to do. That has that blue in it that's there. So I feel like that may make it too matchy matchy. But see, I like how that's really different. too bad because there will be some colors that match up and touch with one another they're just that's just, just the way it's gonna be all right let's bring the camera back so you guys can see the whole thing I've been watching um, Dave's craft room and I really love how he um, does his quilting can you see that
We're doing the best we can, friends, okay? Best we can. How about I'll just kind of hold you guys over the whole thing. So hopefully this is... Yeah, I think I'm liking this. I think I think I'm liking this. I hope I didn't make you guys see sick. <laughs> oh Lord. I am not a professional YouTuber. But this is really for me. This this video is for me to look back on and see what I did and how I did it. So what I think I'm going to do is bring my sewing machine in here. I'm looking at it and I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I don't see a lot of the same type of squares right beside each other. There is a yellow in every block. Every other block, there is a yellow. So the yellow, it does jump out, but it's not directly in your face. I do have extras that I have no idea what I'm going to do with. That's okay. Um, yeah, that's okay. I think I'm just going to make another quilt and just make it go around the Raleigh patch. That's the only thing I can think of doing. Because I wanted to keep the other two North Carolina ones in there. Um, I may get, I don't know what I'm going to do. I really don't know. Because I could have sworn I counted everything correctly. I'm not, uh, not going to show the whole pattern. I didn't want to show the pattern um, for copyright reasons. I don't know all these. But anywho, I, I'm pretty, I'll just show you the picture because you can see the picture online. I'm pretty sure I counted everything correctly. I have everything laid out. Well, this is looking really good. I'm very pleased. All right, less so. Less, less so before I obsess over it. I don't want to overthink this. You know what I mean? Let's go. Okay, so I brought everything in here. Well, not everything, just my machine, my ironing board. Maybe that is everything. My cup board is already set up in the dining room. Um, I decided to bring the sewing machine in here because one, I didn't want to pick up all those blocks. And two, um, I just thought it would be easier we kind of keep it here. So we're gonna do this a quarter of an inch, seam allowance. Um, I have my directions right here. It doesn't say that, but it's, everything we've been sewing here has been a quarter of an inch. So that's what we're just gonna continue on doing. Why is it bunching up like that? What's going on? See? This is not good. Not good. Not good. Let's try that again. Okay. Here we go. Sure. So I can always do that. I didn't like that back stitch. Maybe I won't do it. 
there's our first block sewn together and then I'm going to refer back to my picture to see exactly how I had no, I probably had it like this and then I'm going to sew the rectangle on here but let me press that yeah let me let me let me press that it doesn't really because you're pressing it this way so it doesn't say how you should press it but I think we should press it this because it's already kind of going that way I think we should press it that way seam is going towards this way too so that way it will lay flat that looks good lay flat and then the yellow will go underneath here so the yellow because this is this is the top so the yellow will go underneath here like that so that way when you open it up that will be on the top so then we do the blocks this way now I may pin this one just to make sure it doesn't move too much. If you're looking for a quilting tutorial, this is not the channel for you. If you're looking to watch somebody make plenty of mistakes and go, oh well, this is the channel for you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure those who are like really big into quilting and you know, looking at my seams and they're itching over there. Oh, you can see what I'm doing. I am a pinner. I like to pin. Pinning makes me happy. Makes me. <laughs> We're doing a, a gift exchange with my family for Christmas. It's uh, currently December something. Alexa, what's today's date? It's Thursday, December 14th. There we also, go. I can provide Alexa, stop. So today is December 14th. So Thursday. So this is a Christmas gift. <laughs> can I get it done? Can I get it done? Let's see, friends. Let's see. Did I do it right? Yep. Let's see. It didn't seem to like it when I backstitched. Quilting, I feel like it's really easy when you do it like this. Now, though, for those of you who do like super detailed um, projects where you have, when you're making shapes out of stuff and you have to plan things out, that's a little different. But when you're just making simple blocks like this, quilting is not difficult. And you know how to work a sewing machine and you know how to follow um, pattern directions, you can easily quilt. This is going to be my second completed quilt, but my fourth quilt top, because I do have, oh, no, lies, my third completed quilt. This is my third completed quilt. <clears throat> so this is my third completed quilt. My um, one, two, three, four, fifth quilt top. So there is the block. Let me go press that open. Here's my first completed quilt block. I'm gonna go ahead and complete the rest of these quilt blocks and sew the rows together and then I'll show you guys when I'm done. 
532. Um, this is what my machine is doing now. This is a practice place. Obviously, it's not the quilt. So I'm very irritated because my embroidery machine is doing the same thing. But I have three rows sewn on successfully, and I almost finished that row, and I was really trying to finish that row. I these two rows together. So I'm going to have to figure out how to fold this so that way I have it together the right way. But I am planning on taking pictures just to help remind myself how it laid out because I obviously cannot leave this laid out in my kitchen. And even if I had design wall, this is a gift, and I know he knows I'm working on it, but I do want to try to keep some elements a surprise. That makes sense. But yeah, I just thought I'd uh, record where we're at now in life. I'm going to try to figure out my machine, but I really do like how everything is coming together. I'm glad that I'm able to put yellow and a little bit all the blocks, so you're not just drawn to one spot. You're drawn to all over, and it really does make the coat pop. Before, with all the blues and grays, it was just very muted, and I just felt like it needed something. And I forgot that he picked out yellow and I'm like yes because the patches have yellow in it too so it does coordinate this is not for everybody I understand but it's for me and the person I'm gifting it to so there's that I went okay so I wanted to share this little tidbit because I've seen this posted on Facebook groups people are asking like how do you store your blocks this is how I store mine in this um cardstock bin and pretty much I keep the quilt top in here. I keep the pattern that I'm working on and the pieces. So these are the pieces that are sewn on here. And then here you have the actual blocks in the order of which it would be. And of course I take pictures. So you can see I have, you know, the other blocks underneath it. So when I pull these up, I know I sew these together and then this one here and then so on and so forth. This row is the next row to go underneath oopsies, this quilt. So after I sew it on, I'll put it on there. But I just wanted to show this tidbit because I've seen a lot of people ask about this. Like, how do you, oh, why don't you put the other pattern piece in here? How do you store your quilt um, blocks? Where do you store them at? And these stack easily. And I think they even sell like shelves that these fit in. And I don't know if they fit in those cube Ikea shells or not, but look how easy that is. And if you travel with your quilt to your friend's house, I don't have quilting friends, but if I did, this is how I would travel it. So even if I had to stack it in like this, I mean, it was stuck things move around, but everything is like nice and secure that you would need. And I will, um, you could even bring more. So like if you had like, other fabric stuff it can it can still fit um quite a bit more in here so there's my tip in the video probably the only actual tip i have <laughs> but yeah i have another machine that i can sew with so i'm probably going to try to pull that out um tomorrow maybe we'll see but i'm calling it quick seats for tonight okay so we're back um, sewing again, it's been a whole new day. I think I left you guys yesterday um, with the dilemma of my sewing machine, but I fixed it. It was a lots of clumps of dirt and um, dust, which is pretty much dirt, I guess, and everything else. So what I've done so far, well, I just started, I sew these two blocks together, and now I'm gonna sew this one here. I'm trying to be mindful of the directions of the fabric. Now, some of them, um, you can't tell, like for example, this one, it has words written down. So I'm trying to keep, you know how all the patches are lined up a certain way. So like this one here, yeah, these have words written on it, but I do have a couple of those sideways where you can't really um, do anything about that. And the work, yeah, you know, just the way the fabric was cut, you just couldn't do anything about that, which is fine. I'm totally cool with that. That doesn't bother me. But if it's a smaller square or a square that's going vertical, I would it would bother me if it was going upside down versus side by side. If that makes any sense. So let's go to the sewing machine. So as you can see, we're back in the sewing room. <clears throat> 
So today, I think I've showed you guys this room um, in this house. We'll have to do a um, sewing room tour, but it really isn't much. It's card tables and um, yeah. <laughs> That's it. So this video is not being posted until after Christmas. So let me know in the comments, what did you guys get for Christmas that's crafty related or gardening related that you wanted? Because you know, this channel, we're all about crafty and gardening stuff. I feel like I'm getting a headache, y'all. No bueno. So I tried this sewing setting up <clears throat> um, yesterday when I was doing the sewing in the kitchen because it was more counter height. I didn't like it. I like being able to sit down and, and I feel like I see better. And it also probably because the lighting situation. So you have the light for the machine, which is really not that bright. And I wear glasses so you guys can tell I'm blind. But then I have this desk lamp that um, you can get from, I think that's Target, but you can get it from Walmart, Dollar Tree probably, um, or Family Dollar. Um, and this provides pretty good light right here where you need to be focused at, you know what I mean? need to be focused there's no overhead lighting but you know when you're sewing you want me to see what you're doing really well and it's hard to do that when you don't have good focus light so I noticed with me sewing here my stitches seem to be a lot more accurate and not as loopy fied um, and even though I'm just giving this away and not selling I still want it to be as nice as possible I've learned so much with this particular quilt and I really do like this pattern and I also learned that I enjoy putting the quilt blocks together. It's the whole um, quilting aspect and putting the quilt together that I'm just kind of like, all right, I'm over it. <laughs> that explains why I have so many unfinished quilt tops and not so many um, actual finished quilts. But we're going to change that. 2024, we're changing that. We're branching out. We're... Finishing our quilt tops, I have um, two in here that needs to be finished. And I made a quilt for my son. It's like a playmat quilt, but I never put binding on it. Is it too late to put binding on that quilt? Yeah. Is it too late? That one was quilted poorly. And you know why? Because I did not use a walking foot. Honestly, I just got a serger and I serged around the whole damn thing. So, I don't know. That probably wasn't the best idea to do that, but I did it anyway. <laughs> let's press and then let's see how this block looks. See y'all, nothing fancy. That's the same desk I've had for generations to come. You guys, are, if you have seen any of my sewing room tutor, um, tours, so I say tutorials, tours, you have seen that desk before. So I'm just pressing the quilt how she has it, um, we tells you to press it in the book. So I'm just doing my best to follow the pattern directions. That way it can come out as nice as hers. So here's my finished quilt block and the block will go here. So what I've been doing, and you guys haven't seen it, but what you guys saw this part, I sew these two blocks together and then I sew this block on here. And then what I will do is flip this over and sew these together. And from there, I attach it to here. I think this is where I didn't follow directions, but I don't think it's gonna mess it up. She has you go through and sew all the squares, then sew this, and then you attach them to the, the this bit square from each section. So you attach this, and then you attach that, and so on. And then you attach these two together, and then you will do that for all of them. And then you attach all the rows. I feel as if I can just do one swoop at a time 
I can see where that would be easier because it's less fabric you're handling at a time, but um, assembly line mindset and trying to find a loophole and cut corners is where I feel like you can cut corners and it doesn't really do anything to the quilt. So what I'm gonna do, like I just said, sew these together. And what I also do before I attach this to here, I square this up to make sure this line is pretty even and then I sew it on here and then we'll move on. And I'm not going to show you that on camera because it's pretty much me doing the same thing over and over again. But hopefully the next time I come back on camera you'll see a completely finished quilt top. And then, um, yeah, maybe even going to the, no I don't think we're going to the fabric shop y'all. I just feel so awkward taking the camera out in public like that. And plus, when I get distracted, I don't get focused on what I need to do and all those things. So, but yeah, I'll show you what I get. Yeah. Let's get back to it. Alright. All done. Can you see it? Maybe not. <laughs> but I'll, 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 I'll include a video. Not a video, but a picture of the whole thing and you'll probably see every mistake that I made but it is okay um I got all the blocks sewn on here complete a lot of mistakes were made I think I didn't cut them um correctly this is my um really only second quilt that I am trying to complete um so there's that but I'm okay with that I also think once you quilt it up and you wash it, it will um, kind of like the mistakes won't be as noticeable. So, here, this is what you guys want to look at. <laughs> the quilt top is done. I am going to get this to him for Christmas as is, including the binding and the uh, backing fabric. But at least he can pull this out and see that I finished this for him. And then I will add the backing. I thought I had to square it up. As I square this up, add the backing, the batting and the backing, then I'll quilt it. And then my plans for quilting, and you guys can let me know what you think. Here, put you down a little bit. My plans for quilting is to quilt in the ditch around each block, and then do like a half an inch or a quarter um seam allowance or whatever it's called from the seam and make like a block around here but then also to stitch around each patch as closely as possible um that's my idea is to do kind of like a you stitch in a ditch here and do a, a square stitch around here and then stitch around the block do you hear my stomach growling oh my gosh and then for these other squares, the same concept, stitch in a ditch, or this is a rectangle, stitch in a ditch, and then come up and stitch around it. That's the idea, stitch in a ditch, and then stitch, and a stitch around it. So there'll be a smaller square within a square, a smaller rectangle within the rectangle. That's the plan that I have. I don't think loop de loos or circle these circle these or whatever would go with this I could um, throw it on my embroidery machine but here's the thing I don't like taking it off the hoop but here's the thing my embroidery machine the biggest hoop they can do but I have seen somebody fudge this design but we're, we're not gonna go there for, for right now five by seven so you see I would have to don't mind. Oh, this is empty. You know what? Maybe a better example would be like this. So you know, look at this side. That's okay. Currently. <laughs> Those are airing. Currently for sale on my website. Marion Creations at Shopify.com. So, there we go. Anywho. Um, that website will be linked in the comments. <laughs> so, you see, this is the grid. So, you can see, like, I'll only be able to import quilt this much. And then I'll have to move it here. But my thing is, if I do a loop de loops here, and it's only within this square, rectangle, keep calling this a square, rectangle, that I'll be able to embroider. 
to quilt and border it. Would that look right? Because I would not border on top of this, obviously. Would it look right not to have that on here? I don't think so. So I am thinking the stitching in the ditch method, stitching a square around it, and then stitching around this patch. This patch is glued on and then sewed on. I glued it on to keep it stabled and I sewed it on with the tearaway stabilizer so it could stay on the fabric. But I feel like if I don't stitch close to this, it'll be so much of a gap. And after washing and use and tear over the years or whatever, it won't look as nice. That's my idea. I'm wondering if I would have to hand sew that part though. And I wouldn't hand sew on here. I would hand sew like really close here, around there. That's what I'm wondering. Would I have to do that? So I don't know. I don't know. Will I have to hand sew that on? But you guys will find out because this video is planned to be my start to finish quilt video. So um, again, y'all not y'all see the completed project. Y'all see what I decide to do. Um, <clears throat> but anywho, again, I really do like this um, design. I like these quilt blocks. I have more of these quilt blocks, and I kind of want to do something else with them. Uh, maybe another quilt. I wouldn't do the white squares with the patches. I would just focus on the squares and the rectangles. Um, but I do like it because it's really simple to put together. And now that I know how to cut and measure correctly, <clears throat> it should go a lot better, I think. But what do you guys think as a color combination? I know uh, when I took this, to, when I told the girls at the quilt shop that I'm adding yellow, they were kind of like, I don't know about that though. But it's yellow all over the quilt. So you're not just focused here. There's yellow all over, even at the bottom. This yellow down there too. And then the patches have yellow in them. There's yellow, like, you see this patch has yellow in it. So I didn't want just the, these couple patches that have the only that had yellow in it. I can definitely see how the yellow binding will be too much. I get that. So I'm definitely gonna do a black binding and a navy blue border. So I agree with them on that one. But I do think the yellow helped bro break up this blue and this black and gray because it just makes it just a little more interesting and um yeah so this this is my um this is my quilt top that i made that i am going to complete and make it to a full quilt this is considered a lap size quilt this is huge this is huge in my personal opinion this is bigger than my my other two lap size quilts i feel like that i've created but it's too small of it on any bed. Um, too big for a baby. But yeah. That's it. <laughs>